Yes. So welcome everybody, another Sunday Market Blitz. So we've been doing these for pretty much over three years now. Nick's gonna start it off. He's gonna run through a bunch of analyses, mainly swing trading stuff. Um, if you guys want to ask any questions, just post in the chat and we are doing a giveaway. So all you gotta do is post on your IG story that you're on the Market Blitz and then just tag the funded trader and tag forex league tag nick dark fx tag all our pages so that being said i'll just leave it off to nick and we'll get started yeah let's do it as we always do guys we're going to kick it off i'm going to run through quite a few pairs with you but first we're going to start off with dxy so i'm going to do something on every it's like a method on every single pair here that we go through i'm going to start on the daily time frame just assess the overall trend just to make ourselves aware of what the daily trend is then i'm going to drop to the four hour time frame and they come up with two scenarios, both bullish, both bearish. We're not predicting. It's more so forecasting. We're waiting and highlighting you know, what the most ideal scenarios would be. And we want to see those conditions in order to enter into a trade. So that's simply what we're highlighting here. And I'll get into that in a second. So let's go up to DXY on the daily. And again, the overall trend. We can get rid of all these you know, markers and just look at the overall trend here, right? What, what are the characteristics of a bullish trend? Right, Higher highs, higher lows. Higher highs, higher lows, a nice, steady, healthy trend. Nothing too dramatic, right? You never want to see something just moving straight up like that, right? It's pretty, pretty stable, right? We're moving on the daily, at least it looks like, you know, a healthy trend. Now we do know because of historical levels that, you know, DXY has obviously been on the run for quite a while. And there's nothing really suggesting yet that, you know, it's bearish. There's really nothing at this chart, on this chart, if you look at it, that says, hey, this is bearish, right? A lot needs to happen. This needs to really start forming strong characteristics of a bearish trend, lower lows, lower highs. We need to start taking out, you know, major support levels and start moving lower. So obviously, you know, a lot has to happen for us to consider that. So we can comfortably say that this is still bullish and now drop to the four hour. So we're looking for on the four hour is essentially, you know, structure, just healthy trend on the four hour as well. Again, nothing too dramatic. And just trying to understand what the potential is for the week ahead, right? If we're seeing that structure on DXY is forming very bullish, we're going to see potentially some rejection at 108.6, right? A bounce there. Everything here is pointing that we're going to continue bullish into the week. Okay, so that's really what we're gathering on DXY. And then we're going to use this more as an indicator for other pairs that we're trading, right? The dollar makes up for so much of a percentage of all trade that when it really starts to run, you know, it'll move a lot of the market. So you want to be aware of what the trend is and which way DXY is actually moving. That's why we actually analyze this and come up with, you know, these scenarios. So it's still pretty bullish, right? We moved up through some major levels here. We broke 106.4 after we were in a descending channel. Then we broke 107.6, right? Pushed above, started getting some consolidation in this area. Right around 108.6, we also established a level Price action popped above, found some support there, gave us a higher low, and then continued bullish. So from here, what's the likely scenario, right? We're going to continue bullish, most likely. We can fall all the way to 108.6 and still maintain a bullish trend technically here on the four hour as well. Okay, so we want to be aware of that, look for plays off of 108.6, and then we can you know, determine where DXY is going to go next. Now, if we break 108.6, that's going to be the first sign of you know, a bearish four hour. Right, that's the time frame we're on. We're going to start seeing you know, some lower lows, lower highs. If that does happen, then we'll look at you know, DXY is more bearish for the week and then take that into you know, consideration on other pairs. So this is uh, pretty much the scenarios that we're looking at for DXY. So we're aware of that. Now we can take that information like we've been saying and come over to a tradable pair. So AU here, before we get to the four hour, we're going to go to the daily, do the same thing, just assess the trend. Just refresh ourselves and follow price action, right? It never hurts. It's always a good way to start an analysis or you know a trade setup, whatever you're trying to do. So let's just follow up price action. We're here on the daily. Where we saw high up here, huge bearish pressure. We got a low, lower high, lower low. Price action came all the way up to here. And because of the volume, it was still considered bearish. Found a resistance here. So it just met the prior lower high. Then we fell off to a new lower low, lower high. And now we're looking like we're in the middle of another bearish leg. So overall, this is pretty bearish, right? I think we can all agree on that. So let's go ahead and put these drawing tools back on, drop to the four hour, get a little more into it now. 
zoom in here. And now let's see what's been going on on the four hour, more recent price action, right? So this happened last week. We were bouncing off of 0685 you know, quite a bit. We we're struggling, seeing a little bit of choppiness. So this became a key zone. Also in the past, it's held up you know, pretty well as resistance and support. So we actually took that out. We had some indication because we kept bouncing off support and then we kept seeing lower high, lower high, smaller price action until eventually it broke. And then we took that level out. Now we're consolidating. We're seeing two rejections so far, a nice tweezer top formation and this initial retest. You know, so what's going to happen now, right? Overall, we're bearish. We have, you know, quite a few timeframes that are lining up bearish. So, you know, we obviously want to continue with that. So the most ideal scenario and the most likely based on where price action is, is rejection from 0685. So we just opened up right now. The market's like seeing some volume. We're pushing up. We're going to look for further rejection from this area. And then maybe some nice bearish variations that we could then enter short on. And I've highlighted a nice short position. Looking to get 100 pips, risking 40, comes out to a two and a half to one you know, risk reward. That's not bad. So if I'm risking 1%, I have the potential for two and a half percent back. It's pretty good. So this is, again, the most likely, but you know, we want to stay open minded. We're following price action, we're not predicting. So you know, we need to highlight the opposite scenario. What's the most ideal bullish scenario? And what do we need to see for us to even you know, start considering AU bullish? So it starts here on the four hour. We need to see a break above 0685, right? Nice higher high, confirmed higher low, you know, as close to the level as possible. It's a nice rejection, wouldn't hurt. And then we could consider maybe, you know, entering long, depending on, you know, how these you know, bullish variations form. You know, if we get a nice morning star, three good candles in a row, decent volume, you know, turn out to be a pretty good risk reward and, you know, maybe able to, you know, play this higher. But until this breaks, we're looking more bearish. Okay, this is closer to happening. So that's why this is the most likely scenario as of right now. Okay, but pretty good. AU's looking all right. Let's move over to AJ. This one's a little choppy, but you know, it's, it's pretty clear as well. Let's go to the daily first. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. And what are we doing on the daily? Just assessing the overall trend. Let's see what price action here on AJ has been doing. So just in view here, we have all the way back, till, back uh, on November 21st all the way back here towards, you know, to now. So we've been bullish pretty much since then, right? Been moving higher. We got the higher high, finally got the higher low. That's daily, daily structure right here. Then we pushed higher to the higher high. And now we've been kind of consolidating, bouncing quite a bit off this level. We can already see tons of reactions right at 92. And then the opposite, you know, right around, what is this? 95.5, clear resistance. Overall bullish but we have been choppy you know, more lately. So with that information, we can now turn on the tools, go down to the four hour and get a closer look at what's actually happening. So one thing off the bat we can notice is that we finally got the break of 95 with a higher low above. Notice in the past how much price action struggled getting above 95. So this big blue zone here, this is 95 resistance. We tried to break it, but we actually got above, failed to get the higher low. So that means price action couldn't follow through. Instead, it came back. We ranged for a little bit longer. Now we had another attempt here. We broke above, failed to get the higher low again, right? No follow through turned out to be like some gigantic M pattern. Just look at that. Like there's the high, low, high. There's the break of the low. And then it fell. So it failed to follow through there as well. Here we had an attempt, couldn't even break that time. But now, now we actually cleared it with more volume than we've seen. So this is interesting, right? We know we're overall bullish in the daily. We got the break of 95 resistance. So everything's kind of pointing towards, you know, more bullish movement, right? Now we did see, we have been seeing a little bit of choppiness and we're at resistance already, a new level, 96. So really we just want to see a break of that. If this is really the true break and it's as strong as it's appearing to be, it should have no problem pushing higher, giving us, you know, another higher low above 96 and then we will get a nice trade you know maybe up towards the negative 27 potentially higher and that's right around uh 97 right so we're just playing zone to zone nice whole numbers so 96 and 97 pretty straightforward trade and that turns out to be a 3.6 to 1 roughly it'll depend it'll depend on where price action action actually forms uh, but here it shows we're risking 25 to get 90 so not bad now that would be the most ideal, right? We continue bullish, 
very clean break of 96. We get the high, we get the higher low, easy peasy, we're in. Now, if that doesn't happen, you know, what's the opposite? You know, it's very likely that we could just continue to range. This choppiness could just continue, right? We could just do this as well. Just to give you guys a visual. Could just continue to do this, right? Move sideways. You know, who's to say this is the actual break? You know, we don't know. That's why we're following price action. That's why we need to see the confirmation of a higher low, right? Above resistance, turn new support. So that would be ideal. But, you know, this is a reality too. We could just continue to range. So be aware of that. If this does range and we get back down to 95, we'll just analyze this zone as a, you know, breaker bounce scenario again, right? Just scrap these two ideas, come up with a breaker bounce scenario, and then we're off on a new, you know, set of a uh, set of scenarios. All right, so that's AJ. This is posted. All these are posted in Telegram if you guys want to reference them throughout the week. A lot of these will most likely play out. Again, it's just trend trading. So let's go ahead and jump over to UJ. Clear up these tools. Just make it nice and clean. What's the overall trend here, guys? UJ, bullish. Super clear. Higher highs, higher low, higher high, higher low. And we're off forming a higher high as we speak. So... There's really nothing on this chart whatsoever that suggests bearish pressure or that this chart would be overall, you know, considered bearish, nothing at all. So let's turn these tools back on, drop to the four hour and see what the heck is going on. Cause this thing has just been insane. So this is actually got a little bit more zones than I normally have because the volume has been so great on UJ. This thing has just been moving higher and higher. This is like one of the strongest trends I've seen in a minute. And to give you guys some perspective, you know, we're up 800 pips on this rally alone. So if you let's if you bought over here, right, this this nice reversal, let's just zoom out. So price action was consolidating. We pushed up. There was a nice trade scenario there that installed, started changing the trend, came back through 137, got the lower high, and then it just dumped, dumped all the way down to 130, 131 area. Failed to get the lower high below, couldn't hold it. Came back up, broke above 133. This is actually off slightly. Broke above 133, started consolidating, got some momentum, and then took off here. Now, if you had entered on this you know, break, retest, the start of this trend, you would be in one hell of a trade right now. Granted, it would be a pretty massive swing trade. Would have been around 18, 18th of August, but you'd be up about you know, 500 some odd pips. You know, this, this is literally one move. This is the next, you know, higher high that we're forming right now, you know, according to the daily. So huge volume, really massive. There's really nothing that we can do at this point until we see the next higher low in the, uh, you know, in the trend. So we really just need structure. I mean, believe it or not, this is even a good amount. This is almost 200 pips, about 170, you know, just from the next level of support. So we really have to be patient on this one. UJ is definitely at the bottom of my watch list. You know, it's going to take the most time. I don't expect this to play out. You know, the next couple of days probably going to take a minute. Uh, so we'll wait on this one. We'll see what happens. But if we do get a higher low, right, the next higher low in the sequence here, be perfect to catch it off 139. You know, I you know obviously there's not that much, um, you know, structure in terms of fibs. But if we did get the right setup, we got a nice higher low. This would be the most ideal if you were looking at UJ. Right, just a nice bounce, good pocket of confluence right here, right off 139, then you'd start targeting higher. Now, if we are to reverse on UJ and consider it bearish, we really need to take out 139, start seeing some strong characteristics of a bearish trend. Lower lows, lower highs, huge volume, meaning larger candles in comparison to what we've been seeing on the bullish side, really just needs to take out some major support levels and start moving lower. But uh, yeah, don't short UJ. That's uh, probably tip of the week. Just be aware of this. This thing is so bullish. But uh, yeah, again, bottom of the watch list, but let's keep it moving. Let's jump over to EJ. Zoom out. We're on the daily time frame. Go ahead and clear up all the tools. And again, we're just getting the trend. We want to be aware of what the daily trend is. See what price action has been doing. If we're about to, you know, experience the next, you know, high or strong movement from the daily time frame, we really want to be aware of it. So that's really the whole point, you know, again, behind doing this. So let's just follow price action. We saw that we were pretty much moving sideways here, 
bouncing between a few zones. We had some, you know, volume enter the market here. Bearish pressure. We hit 125, and then price action turned around. Right, went super bullish. Started establishing some higher highs, higher lows, higher highs. So we really rallied quite a bit from there. But you know, we've recently seen this start to transition. Right, we took out this higher low. So this is our first lower low right here. Price action came back at the lower high, followed by the lower low. A little bit of consolidation. And now price action is pulling back. So overall, this is recently bearish, right? It literally went sideways movement, bullish, now bearish, moving down. Okay, now really until we take out some of these highs, it's going to be considered bearish. So that's nice to know. We're aware of that now on the daily. Let's go to the four hour and see what's going on here. Get a closer look, zoom in. All right, there we go. So we, let's just follow price action again. We saw some consolidation here. Price action was struggling around 137, right? Literally just dancing around this zone. We saw a high, bouncing off resistance, saw low, bouncing off support, until finally it broke. Nice bullish break right here. So we rallied all the way to 140, which is where we're at now. So we're seeing a little bit of choppiness. This could be, you know, what we would consider head and shoulders. So there's a left shoulder, that'd be the head. Now would be you know, the right shoulder. And this is essentially indicating that this, the market's going to reverse. We're going to start seeing you know, the opposite trend, lower lows, lower highs. Um, until really we see a break of 139, we can't confirm that. So the most likely right now is simply a continuation of the trend, which is bullish, right? We're, we're pushing up, we're hitting 140, we're stalling a little bit. Price action is resting at this level, could easily break above, give us the higher low we need, the one that we failed to get here. And then we'll enter on that. We have a nice trade ready for us already. It's actually going to be a pretty massive trade. Let's call it 185. Again, this will slightly vary depending on where you know price action actually forms, where the entry comes in, what your stop loss is going to look like. But roughly, this is what you know the idea is. Just do let's do 185 for 50, just shy of a four to one. If you risk one percent here, you'll end up getting 3.7 if the trade plays out. You know, not bad. Now, again, if it does reverse, we need to see massive rejection off 140 and then that, that break of 139. That would be the start um, for us to consider, you know, EJ more bearish. Maybe if we got a nice lower high here, there could be, you know, a smaller trade just like this. I'll mark this up just for, just for the visual. Why not? And we'd look to play this back toward the top of the range, you know, and ultimately you know, back into the range. If we are, you know, to consider this short, it'll probably start moving lower, but we'll see. That's not close to happening. You know, this is more, you know, realistic for this, uh, for where price action is right now. So we'll see some waiting to do here. 140 or 139. We'll see where it goes. Now we're going to move over to gold. Holy, look at that candle. So that's the, uh, that's right now. Damn. Yeah, this thing's moving. Quite a bit. I mean, that's off of DXY a little bit too. All right, let's go back to that. See massive rejection on this candle, which is right now. So the volume is starting to come back. Uh, probably not going to sustain. We'll see though. But let's not. Let's take. Let's take a couple steps back. Let's go to the daily. Go through our normal analysis. So what is the daily telling us? What is the overall trend? We can see right here we hit a high, right around. What is this? 2070. Came down. Started consolidating. Failed to push higher, went bearish at this point. Once we took out this higher low, right at 1920, we've been bearish. So we got the lower low, a little bit of consolidation, lower high, lower low, lower high. Now we're in, you know, we're pretty much at the same lower low back here. So all signs are pointing bearish. Let's go ahead and put the tools back on, go to the four hour and just follow price action again. What's been happening? So we've been pretty bearish. This is a pretty steady trend, right? We rejected 1800, shot to a lower low right around 1740, came back up, formed the lower high right around 1760 area, off to the next lower low right at 1720, lower high at 1740, lower low down here, right around 1700 now. And now we're seeing, you know, price action slow down a little bit. I mean, we did just have the you know, the weekend in trading leading up to that. So there are a bunch of, you know, dojis in here. Uh, but now we have this huge volume candle, right? 
much like we've seen over here. So this could just push up or could reject right now. Honestly, I would just wait for this uh, probably in a few hours, see how this forms or you know, even tomorrow. Uh, I'm not looking to take any trades right now. Not yet. I would need to would definitely wait on this one. You can see it's already struggling. We're seeing some, some wick form. So ideally, we want to see 1720 reject. We'll get some nice bearish variations, maybe something we can enter short on. And then we have a trade marked up here. Right, we're looking to play it towards the next lower low, which lines up right with our monthly around 1675. And roughly this trade would be a three to one or 3.3 to one. We're risking 100 pips, looking to get about 330. So not bad. That's pretty good. But I want to make you guys aware of the opposite scenario. What has to happen for us to look at gold and say this is you know, more bullish? We need to see a break above 1740 with a confirmed higher low above. And then maybe we would you know, be interested in taking longs, targeting key support levels, and maybe back up towards you know, 1800. That's definitely a ways away. We need to see you know, how price action forms up at these two levels. So 1720 and 1740, because this is also possible too, right? We could easily reject off this level here and still be overall bearish. So just be aware of that. Really just looking to enter on lower highs in key areas, right? In areas of confluence. And that way we gain a lot of confidence and we can stick to our strategy and uh, be profitable at the end of the day, right? So that's pretty much all the analysis that I have for you guys. Quick recap, I covered DXY, AU, AJ, UJ, EJ, and gold. These are posted Discord, Telegram. So if you guys want to reference them, you know, throughout the week, they're there. Well, let me go but uh, yeah, I'm going to pass it off to Angelo, and we'll see what he's looking at for the week. Nice. Good job. So, guys, just as a reminder, if you want to get qualified for the giveaway, just post on your IG story tag. The funded trader tag Forex League, tag Nick Dark FX. Just take a picture of the screen of you guys on the call and you'll qualify for the giveaway. I, I see a bunch of people um, that already did it. So they already qualified. So let me know. You see my screen? Yep. Good to go. All right. So we're going to get started with DXY. So I know Nick just covered it. Um, but we're going to just run it back. We're going to cover this one more time. So starting off on the weekly time frame. So I haven't actually uh, traded in about two weeks. Um, so I haven't even looked. I didn't even look at the chart last week. So coming back now, we're pretty much exactly where we need to be, um, or at least where we thought we would be, because we have rejected this lower zone down here and for anyone that's been on the sessions before you know that i like to just mark down on the weekly time frame a uh, support and resistance zones based around where price action is we had marked this lower zone at 105 and this upper zone at 110 as soon as price pretty much rejected it with this strong candle we pretty much could assume that we were going to retest this 110 area as you can see price has come up to that area now we're we're starting to show some rejection here we could just blow through here but it's more likely that we're going to see some sort of reversal and a retest of this previous high point like we've done previously so with that in mind coming down to the four hour time frame and just looking at this uh overall price action is just bullish i mean we're just forming these bullish patterns here we have the break above we retested this previous high point right there and then we just broke, retest, broke, and this is where we're currently at. So for anyone that doesn't know how to read this, I mean, you can mark down these patterns several different ways right here, but basically had like a breakout of this little flag pattern, broke the resistance level, retested as support, kind of, you know, nuts to be looking for buys, at least on DXY, just because we are below the resistance. So now that we're, I'm going to take this off. I've actually never seen that tool before. So I guess they have a little update here where their trend line showed the days. I just noticed that. All right. That's so, nice. yeah, I don't know, trading view stepping it up, apparently. So, so, yeah, considering where we currently are, the trend is just bullish. 
So for DXY to start to, for us to start to think that this is breaking into a downtrend, we'd have to break this trend line. We'd have to ideally break support right here, form a lower high, and then we'd be off to the downside. On the flip side, we could easily hit support right here, go bullish, continue with this uptrend um, right now. We do want to wait and see. We are getting a lot of bearish kind of price action at the moment with this huge wick that's forming. Uh, we have about two hours left on this four-hour candle. But keep in mind, we're in an uptrend You know, on the four-hour time frame. We're just in a pullback right now. And the weekly time frame is overall in an uptrend as well. So buyers definitely are in the market. We're just anticipating potential rejection of this. So DXY always like to start off with this before we get into some of the other major pairs here. We are going to start off though with GJ. So GJ as covered a few weeks ago, let's just zoom out. This thing has been super choppy on the weekly time frame, as we can see um, overall in this huge uptrend, but very much like DXY, we're hitting this resistance right here, which is causing price to reject and move back to the downside. Um, we like to target kind of the other weekly or support level once we reject one level. So as we can see, we've rejected this red zone right here. All this price action that was really choppy. But the idea was basically to target down here. So coming down to the four hour time frame, we could see the market opened up really strong this week coming up. Pretty much 1%, 170 pips, right? So true to the upside. A couple weeks ago, when we were on this call, about two weeks ago on the last market blitz, we were basically looking for a retest of this resistance to then shoot for another um, push to the downside. Obviously, that didn't happen. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take this off. One second. I'm going to take this off. Let's just clear up this level right here. Let's come back up to the weekly and just kind of take reservation. Where are we currently at? So looking at it like this, again, we're below the weekly resistance. We're in a downtrend. We're definitely in a downtrend on the four hour time frame. We're about to break out, though, of this little trend that we're in here. Or actually, we just kind of broke out of this little trend here. So momentum is shifting back to the upside. I know I had this trend line drawn up there. We are shifting kind of back to the upside right now. I personally just wouldn't want to necessarily take buys on this. I don't think it's the greatest thing in the world to take buys. If you were to take a buy, pretty much you'd be looking for something like this. It's very simple. Look for, take this off. Look for price to continue to break out. Wait for the retest target the resistance zone, you know, that's kind of what a buy position would look like. I personally am just not that bullish on this, like not bullish enough to take this trade. Um, this is kind of what it would look like. Stops be like here, be like a three to one risk reward trade. Just not a trade that I like to take. I'd rather wait, um, you know, for this thing to come up to a better resistance level. So bringing back this trend line right here and then knowing that this is definitely a very strong area right here knowing that price could potentially reject here i'd rather actually take a potential sell when price comes up into this area but that's just me so i'm going to put an order right here or at least a um, forecast and order right here i throw stops you know somewhere in this area remember we're always kind of targeting the other side of this range. So ultimately it would be all the way down here. This is kind of like target one, target two, target three, using these lower points right here. So we could just leave it there. I'm just going to move my stop loss. And as you can see, stops are pretty wide because this is a swing trade. Um, so that is what I'm looking for on this one, but not the most high probability trade in the entire world. So I'm going to leave it on here though. We'll see if price does make it up into this 163. 300 area for GJ. So let's go over to UCAD. This is pretty much a trade that what we had gone over on this call um, two weeks ago. So pretty much what we saw was prices in this channel moving to the upside, right? So it's making, it actually started making higher highs and higher low points. 
right here. And then we kind of got fucked over over here. So we're looking for shorts uh, right in this area right here. And then price just made this bullish engulfing candle right here. And then as soon as that happened, we were just looking for buys because it broke above the red zone. So once it broke above, you could see right here, we we're just looking for a retest. We marked it out. And then once it retested, you know, look for buys. Um, so this trade is just running at the moment. Um, coming back to the weekly, you could see we broke above this red weekly. Now we're targeting this like 130, 300 area. So we're just going to keep kind of riding out this trade idea. I know we're at the top of this ascending channel um, on the weekly, but we are just have, we do have a ton of momentum. Um, I wouldn't re-enter unless we retest, you know, this previous high point, like right around this area. So I'd look for re-entries kind of in this zone. And remember, we're targeting up here so we can be pretty generous with the stop loss. I mean, we could use this as a higher low point. We could also be as aggressive as putting it all the way up here, considering we know this is kind of a resistance zone right here. So I'm going to leave it somewhere in the middle, right around five to one, 50 pips. Um, so this would be the re-entry on this trade. So if you guys have a similar analysis on UCAD, um, you know, let me know if you guys do think that we're just at a high now and we're just going to break to the downside. Um, consider we got kind of overextended here. You know, curious uh, what your guys' thoughts are. But this is my idea with UCAD. I think the, the momentum is pretty bullish. You know, weekly has been pretty bullish. Um, it, it has, like, yet to have a huge bullish run. Like, we have this run, pull back, this run, pull back, you know, this run, pull back. So it's kind of right where we're at right now. Like, it is due for a bit of a pullback, but we're just going to try to ride the momentum here, you know, keep it going. So that's my idea on UCAD. Remember, DXY, for that to happen with UCAD, DXY would have to push to the upside. So we would have to find support here. So it's good to watch DXY. If this thing starts to break out to the downside, then UCAD's going to just calm down all the way back to entry on this trade right here. So that's why we always are just using DXY. So coming down to NU, this is a trade that I personally just whiffed on. I just missed. Um, weekly is clear as day. It's just in the downtrend, right? It's just been in the downtrend for quite some time. Just making these lows, lower high, this low, this lower high. Look at that engulfing. And then again, making a new low right here. Um, so, you know, weekly, I like to just look at the trend. So trend, clearly bearish. Where are we in regards to our resistance? Resistance is right here. So we're below the resistance. And then price action is telling me that this is like a spinning top. So it's probably going to reverse back into the red zone. Coming to the four hour, this is with the spinning top. So there's some sort of break of structure going on, you know, on the lower time frame. You could even you could even say that this is some sort of lower time frame, like head and shoulders pattern right here. And we just kind of broke, you know, the right shoulder. So this thing most likely is going to push up into the red zone right here. So if you wanted to trade this thing more short term. You'd be looking for this, but for me, as soon as it comes into the red area, that's when I'm going to start to look for sells. So once it comes up into here, I'm going to start to look for this type of price action where we consolidate and then it breaks some sort of support retest. And ideally it retests like the red zone right there. And then we move to the downside. So this is pretty much my idea on NU good spot because you can put stops like right above there and then you're just targeting previous lows and beyond that so let's see weekly low liquidity has been taken out so def definitely some buy rejections accumulation is formed and also downward trend it's broken yeah so it's looking like reversal on NU right now um like you, that you're saying in the chat just comes down to where is this going to reject from and this is just important, like I'm just not trying to get caught in a short right now. And then price retraces on me all the way up to this level 50, 60 pips. I'd rather just take the short up here if that is going to happen. Um, so it's just for me a way better, way better play, you know, way more confident in that position. So yeah, this is NU. You know, if you want to take those short term, like 
if you come down to the one hour, you know, maybe you can make sense of uh, if you break this down like a little bit more closely and just look at market structure, you can just see a reversal. We had this new high point. This is where you really want to enter. And now it's pushing right here. So you'd want to like wait for like a retest or something to actually get in. Um, but this is kind of a textbook uh, break of structure from a downtrend right here into an uptrend. And now you're just trying to ride the higher low point. So I, I don't normally go down to the four, the one hour that much right now. I'm just doing four hour kind of swing trading. You could also just kind of see based on the four hour, you know, that's kind of happening on the one hour. So yeah, that's NU moving over to GU. So last time we looked at this two weeks ago and we were just kind of looking for the retest and then continue to go to the downside. As you can see, thing just kept pushing to the downside, which is pretty wild because, you know, GU has really never been down here or hasn't been down here in a long ass time, you know, reached here in 2020, you know, March, 2020, before that hasn't been down here since good old 1985, you know, before, before I was born. So this thing has in some unprecedented territory right now. It has a lot of room to move down if it's going to continue to be bearish, right? It has a lot of room, 8% more to move down. Um, let's just run through the weekly. So zooming in a bit, weekly has kind of completed its push, you know, this, this continuation of the overall trend. So it's found a new low right now, and now it's starting to have a pullback. We could see support is literally right here. We could actually zoom out because we got to draw a new support level and it's going to be it's going to be pretty difficult to draw because there's not not much to be working with here so you can see on the weekly time frame all the way back here i mean this this was a bitch to trade this this is like opening up up a fucking a million points like what is this opening up one percent like holy shit so there's really not much like i'm going to just mark I'm going to mark this down because there was definitely some resistance here. And then we're just going to go back to where we're at right now. You know, it's not the strongest level, but it is something to just use. I'm going to replace it with an actual rectangle. And we're just going to get rid of this. So this isn't a potential area to look for reversals again. I mean, more recently, we obviously are hitting support right here. That's why we're starting to pull back. Um, coming to the four hour, again, I'm looking to take uh, cells, you know, at a strong level. So I really wouldn't do anything until we come back to these two areas. You know, this would be a very, this one would be the best position to be taking cells in because there's support, there's resistance, you know, there's both sides of the market telling you that we're showing rejection here, a lot of liquidity in that area. This could be like a huge trade. You could also use a huge stop loss in that area. And then this, this one would be, in my opinion, a little bit early, kind of shorting it here, um, but still definitely a decent idea because we're just, we're just trading with the trend. Like we're not trying to go against you know what the trend is telling us weekly and four hour lines up um pretty simple when you break it down like that so trade with the trend you know use these levels that are gonna have rejection at which is mainly this area this uh you know don't fall in love with this area right here so gu definitely a decent idea you know gu lines up as well with gj and they correlate kind of nicely so it's good to see that and then Think about DXY, we're looking at GU to push up, you know, a couple percent, one percent, two percent, about 1.2 percent. So we'd want, we'd basically want, we basically would want DXY to come down a bit and then find support, not what I'm really thinking it's going to do. Um, so we'll see how that plays out. But regardless, that's the idea on GU. Again, UCAD's idea, you know, just continuing this bullish trends. Um, NU looking for pullback before we short this again. And then last but not least, uh, NAS 100. So NAS 100 
has been a rather interesting kind of pair index to follow. Only one that I've been following and taking potential trades on. And we had this, you know, large pullback. And then last couple of weeks, everything just kind of collapsed again, you know, down 10%, 11%. Um, obviously not the greatest thing in the world, you know, for for the tech stocks, but it's uh, it's showing us what we kind of assume and we're continuing with the trends. We did have a bit of like a break of structure here. We had this resistance level that was broken. So we formed this like new high right here. And now it's like, do we find a higher low and move to the upside? Do we just go to the downside from here, right? You know, I'm more of the thinking that we're probably going to find support somewhere in this area and bounce to the upside, continuing how many buyers stepped in in this area. So I'm really looking for this play. Uh, we can see price is starting to lose its volume here to the downside, right? We're starting to form these like very small, higher or lower low points, you know, breaking the support. And then now we just double bottomed in this area, you know, not to say it's going to happen from here. I think it's going to move lower back into 119. Then from here, we're going to see another double bottom, another consolidation. And then that's when we're going to see the breaks and then the retests back to the upside. So NAS 100, nowhere near entry for me. I'm just going to keep this on the radar. I do think it's going to move to the downside. So if you did want to take potential shorts, you know, this would be the area to short in like right here. And then you'd probably have to go down to a lower time frame to really scope this thing out. Um, and obviously stop the stop loss is not ideal at the moment. So you'd probably have to wait, you know, move this a little bit tighter in this area, depending if it rejects there. Um, but yeah, so to answer your question, Mosh Waters, I don't I don't trade uh, on the one minute. You know, I, I this is for swing trading this session. They we're only covering swing trades. Um, so yeah, that's the style that Nick and myself have always taught in Forex League. We do have an intraday strategy that's um, you know, looking at the lower time frames like the five minute and just trading in the New York session. But we don't cover that on this on the market blitz. This is just for swing trading because <clears throat> we're not even in the New York session. So it's like kind of pointless to even show that analysis. But but yeah, so that's that's NAS 100. Um, coming over to BTC. So we've just been looking at BTC kind of from afar. Um, obviously, we're in a huge bearish trend. I think it was like funny, like I think last, last like, you know, a couple of weeks ago, someone was like, oh, we're not even in a bearish trend yet. It's like, I don't know how much more bearish it can get. Like this thing is. Yeah. Down. The definition of a bearish chart is this right here. This thing is down more than it could ever be down. And we just formed. I like to even look at Ethereum to kind of look at this a bit more closely. I mean, Ethereum rejected the resistance that we just had on here perfectly, right? Hit hit this 19 area. This was that previous support rejection. Now it, it is showing some strength. I will say this. Uh, Ethereum has shown some strength, you know, this inverted hammer candle. So we found support. Now we're pushing. I don't know where this thing thinks it's going, but... I would imagine I would imagine that it's going down <laughs> lower. Going so, to the moon. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know what Ethereum Ethereum's, you know, thinking these days, but thing looks like it's going down. BTC strong push to 20k again. Really no reason why this thing shouldn't go further down. I was looking at um I saw something that was saying that it was like at 14,000 or something like that level there's like thousands of orders um, sitting there. So it sounds like, you know, someone's going to drive price to that level. Thousands of orders are going to probably trigger, not to say that it's going to move, you know, up from there, but definitely an interesting, you know, area to uh, to monitor at this like 12,000, 14,000 area. Um, because originally, you know, we had put this thing on here where it comes down, you know, starts to move up and then eventually thing has its push, you know, all the way back to the upside. And this is going to, this is going to take a while. So, you know, we're going to cover this, but this could take years to get back. Realistically, this could take years to get back. Yeah. Very similar to last time. We're just kind of copying the last trend 
Last time took literally three years. So playing the long game. Play the long game with crypto. I mean, definitely some money to be made in it. But if you don't have patience, you're never gonna make the money in uh in the crypto. But that's pretty much it on the analysis for this week, guys. Uh once again, if you want to qualify for the giveaway, just post it on your IG story. We've got few things going on with funded trader right now some promotions other things you know obviously get in the discord if you're not in there to get all the updates tomorrow night we're going to be doing a ask anything session with one of the funded people so he's going to hop on talk about his experience with funded trader everything like that so definitely hop on that session and other than that we'll pick the winner for the giveaway soon and best of luck to all you guys this week trading in the market yeah. Take care, guys. Good luck. Let's get Peace. it. Peace out, everybody.